Remove all negative, erroneous, unverified, inaccurate, obsolete, outdated information from your credit reports. That's right. Remove all negative items from your credit reports. Here we are once again on the live stream on a Saturday. Today is Saturday. Today is June, Saturday, the 19th, 2021. As individuals start to come into the live, I'll ask them, can you hear me okay? Also, I'm going to put my email address here. That's right. Who else is putting their email address out there for you so you can email me? You can email me and the team. and We can help you get to the other side. That's right. Also, if you are interested in doing Harry, your own credit, I'm putting my sites in here, 609creditrepair.com, or we can do the work for you at the awesome life. Telling you now is the time. Now is the time. You are seeing it. You are seeing it out there as we come out of these unprecedented times where we have the ability to get out and potentially you want to get that home now, right? You might want to get that car now. You may want to get that in career, that new business. Now is the time. In fact, Business credit is on your mind, ALG, businesscredit.com. I want to put everything here before we get started. Hi, Brooks is here. Hey, B, hey, good to see you. I can hear you first time on your live. Good to see you. Adrienne, Adrian, Adrian, nice, good to see you. Thank you for the thumbs up there. I see a few people putting thumbs up. All right, so let's talk about, first and foremost, an individual getting a 700 credit score over 760 credit score they've got a few things off uh their negative nasty erroneous items they started at the 500s in the high 500s and uh new business yes individual wants new business this year that's right kaylee hill hey i've hey brand haven't been out in a while thank you for showing up i appreciate it individuals coming out uh it's summertime now basically summertime it's getting warmed up people are coming out people are on the live people are getting out there having a good time enjoy and remember we are here to help you get your credit squared away so if you have any issues let us know got my email here so individual says hey look you know got this email coming in everything seems pretty solid i'm up in the 700s okay um took me a few months they actually did in a couple in a few months which is good they said three which is great but now they have some hard inquiries okay and it actually looks like some of their hard inquiries are holding them back, which is interesting because they have a credit score in the mid 700s. I had a similar situation where I had some hard inquiries. Uh, for me, it was a little different because I had them attached to accounts that were in good standing. And that means that, hey, you want to leave them alone. You don't want to dispute an account. You don't want to dispute a hard inquiry that has a good account associated with it because oftentimes they'll say, oh, well, you know what? We'll just close out that account. But if there's non account holding inquiries, you can dispute these things. Okay. We've got specific letters that talk about, and we've talked about Section 604 of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, how it can be utilized. They have to be able to show permissible purpose. So oftentimes the collectors or credit card companies or, you know, original furnishers of information like original creditors, they're supposed to have some type of documentation, contract agreement showing that this is, you know, the agreement that you said that you were going to get for a card or uh, a contract for that card or whatnot to maintain that trade line on the report. So to do that with the hard inquiry is something very similar. They've got to be able to show, hey, was there an application? Would this individual actually reach out? Was there permissible purpose to do a hard inquiry to look for credit for this person? Do they have that documentation? Okay. Can they 100% verify that? Can they provide that? Otherwise, anyone could put anything on anyone's credit report if they had access to it. You have to be able to substantiate this. So oftentimes, you know, they don't want to necessarily play by the rules. Some people want to play games. Some viewers want to play games. Some collectors and creditors, they say, oh, well, you know, they didn't maintain that documentation. They didn't think that you knew your rights. They didn't want to hold millions and millions and millions of documents. Well, that's not on you. That's on them. Those are your rights. Those are 
the rights on the Fair Credit Reporting Act, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, okay? Kaylee Hill says, hey, you know, I've got some paid medical collections that I'm getting rid of. I want to know what can I do? Some tips, Brandon, some tips, and tricks, some secrets here on the live. That's right. Okay. So for medical, for medical, what you can do is you can send this to the bureaus and you can send a dispute letter, 609 dispute letter. And in that dispute, when they're supposed to provide physical documentation, okay, one of the reasons, aside from unverified account, you can put no contract for medical, okay? Specific coding for the bureaus, no contract, okay? Now, you can also send your collection validation letter to the collectors for this medical. Now, if they send any medical information back, from the collectors, and we've seen this happen, okay? We've seen this happen. And if they send any medical information back, medical codes, CPT codes, what you had done, full-blown, some people have had full-blown X-rays or CAT scans or MRIs or whatever, sent as proof, and they don't have a signed HIPAA release from you showing, saying, that they can utilize this, can see your medical information, that can be a HIPAA violation, and you can send your HIPAA letters. This is available to you, okay? I know uh, Ms. Hill has this. If you're watching this now and you're thinking, hey, I want this, I want to get some medical collections off, whether it paid or not, okay? You know? Now we say, hey, usually, hey, hey, hey don't be paying them collectors, right? Hey, drum, hey, put the laptop down, don't be paying them collectors, but... If for some reason it's the videos or something other situation and you did, don't worry about it. You can still dispute. They still have to have the same documentation. All right. Brandon, first time. Good to see you. Daily. Dennis Daily? Denise? Dennis? Dennis Daily, I think. Bureaus failed to investigate collection. All right. Demand for investigation letter. I'm glad that you asked today. Okay. So sometimes the bureaus think they're going to get over and they're just not going to investigate. They're not allowed to do that. But they hope that more people than not don't know their rights. And so we have, this is why I say... You want to utilize these letters and the way they're written and the way that we've created them after, you know, years of doing credit repair, repairing my own credit and learning. The letters are written specifically in the language that get the right disputes. So if they try this tactic and they try to say, oh, well, we're not going to reinvestigate or we're not going to do an investigation you have this letter demanding a credit bureau investigation. Okay. So it quotes very specific language like we talked about. Okay. Rather than just using the eOSCAR system, says right there. Okay. You have to do an independent, reasonable investigation. Cushman versus TransUnion, Stephenson versus Experian, Richardson versus Equifax. The courts ruled each and every time that the Credit reporting agencies couldn't merely parrot information. They must do a reasonable investigation. And this is under Section 1681 of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, Section 611, reinvestigation. They have to reinvestigate, okay? So simply sending a generic form from the reinvestigation system saying, oh, well, we looked into it. We're not going to investigate unless you send information or we're not going to look at this. We don't want to do this. Not acceptable. Not a reasonable investigation. Okay. It even says, hey, look, it allows for damages. The Fair Credit Reporting Act allows for damages up to $1,000 per violation. 
that type of coding that they put in because they put it in code so they scan it so they scan it and put put a two digit code or whatever and the way it's written gets kicked up to their potential escalation department right where it gets escalated um it has the right verbiage where they know and you're sending this stuff to them with documentation you can complain to the cfpb as well you can show them oftentimes they do not want to deal with potential violations of the fair credit reporting act for a thousand dollars per violation it's not something that they want to do oh they removed oh your performance they removed they, mo they removed your negative item in 32 days. Okay, very good. Very good. Good to hear. Good to hear your credit repair is going well. Appreciate it. All right. Brandon, I'll be giving you a call next week. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. Getting in with the Awesome Life group. And Vom. So they're not allowed to. I'm not 100% sure what that Vom, Vom word. I don't know. But basically, you're saying, hey, look, collection was deleted. Um, now they're trying to put it back on and trying to refresh the statute's limitation. No, that's not okay. That's not okay at all. So it was deleted. So you have proof it was deleted. You know the date of delinquency from the report that you saw, right? And this is why you keep good records. Hey, when you pull a report, Keep a report. That's why annual credit report or wherever it is that you get your reports allows you to save the report as a PDF um, and keep it. So you can say, well, this was here on such and such a date. It had this date of delinquency. Which one is it now? You're trying to uh, blow it. How's it going? Princess Jasmine uh, with the pair that says, how's it going? Appreciate it. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, that is a hilarious pair emoji. And so they'll try to do this stuff, right? They'll try and say, oh, well, we're going to put it back on. No, <clears throat> we have a letter for that if they try to play such a game and try and put stuff, stuff which is pretty rare. They usually don't do this kind of nonsense because they know they can get in big, big trouble. You can complain to the CFPB and uh, you can pull your, you can show them the data delinquency. You can show them on the report. You can say, no, this is not, you can't be putting, so you have multiple violations, multiple things to utilize, to leverage this, to uh, have this removed from your credit reports. This is the type of stuff. So when we talked about, um, I just you know talked about the uh, EOSCAR letter, right? And then the demand letter. And it has the right verbiage and the right, you know, Fair Credit Reporting Acts on it. We've talked about 604. Those acts, you're basically saying, this is the act, this is the potential violation, you're violating this, you're violating my rights, utilize this to either remove this, delete this immediately, or suffer the consequences. And this is why it's so important to have such letters. 609creditrepair.com. We can do this work for theawesomelifegroup.com, all right? And if you're watching, please give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Davey in the house. All right. Hey, Brandon and the Tribe. Champions of Justice 2004. Brandon, I am now, this is my credit score, 721, 740, and 742 credit scores. Started, Champion of Justice started with a 495 credit score, a 485 credit score, and a 490 credit score, okay, in seven months. Thank you so much. So in seven months, this individual went from the high 400s to the mid 700s. Congratulations, Champion of Justice. Champion of Justice 2004. So if we take, hey, if we take seven, seven, 42, we'll take the median score. So that's basically what they take the, the highest score and the lowest score, throw it out. So 740. Okay. Right. And let's see. 490. So average here.
wow, a 250 point boost in seven months. So in seven months, this individual got a 250 point boost, right? Along the way, champion of justice was getting stuff moved, right? In that right direction. So in seven months, it was accumulation. So at six months, probably was at the low 700s, right? Or even in the 710, 7, at five months, maybe at 690, that's it, right? So um, 400, 500, 600. Halfway through, you're probably looking at 125 point boosts, roughly, right? Give or take. In three months, this individual, 125 point boost. In six, seven months, 250 point boost. This could be you. You could be next. If you're watching this, right, you're watching the replay, 609creditrepair.com. We can do the work for the Awesome Life Group. This is awesome. The Awesome Life Group.com. You are able to. <laughs> you are able to. This individual said, hey, Jerome's holding the camera. Good today. Good, good work, Jerome. Good. Hey, Jerome, good work. Get, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Don't get too. Don't. Hey, don't be shaking. The, don't be shaking. Don't be shaking the camera. Don't be hitting the table. The record could skip. All right. So this is the type of stuff we're talking about, right? Boosting your credit. Congratulations, Champion of Justice. You can do this. You can be next. Ah, ha ha. Wireless expert. What do you do when Experian isn't accepting your online dispute? And now they're not accepting the mail. Okay. So don't, you don't want to dispute online. Don't be disputing online. They don't uh, allow for uh, certain disputes. You want to send everything in the mail. Um, if you've done a bunch of online disputes and now they're like, oh, well, we're not going to look into this. We're looking, you know what I mean? Uh, basically, what you would do, maybe wait 30 days. Um, if you had to, you could send a drop all disputes letter. If anything is in, still says consumer disagrees or whatever like that. And then you can send your start with your uh, 609 dispute letters. Ah, Princess Jasmine, I now see your question. Okay. I have an unauthorized charge. Brandon, I have an unauthorized charge that brought my score down. I need this off my personal and business purpose ASAP. Can you grant some clarity on when I should use a promise to pay or dispute? Okay, so this is an unauthorized charge. So however this happened or whomever did this, you need to let them know if that's unauthorized and that was unauthorized. And so they should be able to backdate and go back and deal with whatever it might be, a, a chargeback situation or whatever uh, that that might be. Now, if it's something different than an authorized charge and he's got like a late payment or a collection or a charge off, because I'm not really sure exactly what you mean by unauthorized charge uh, precisely. Okay, let's see. From a rental car company, they have somehow placed unauthorized charges on my credit report. Wow. Please see my question. Yeah, a rent from a rental car company. How did that happen? What, what do you mean an unauthorized charge? So somehow they got, they probably held the security on your, your uh, credit card. Yeah. And maybe something happened. Uh, I don't, I don't really know um, what the situation is with the rental car company. Uh, you can let me know. You can email me or you can let me know here in the chat. <clears throat> But there's a couple of ways, right? So you can work with your credit card issuer if it's not with them. You're saying it's with the rental car company, so maybe they can help you out with that. And also, um, you are going to fight this with the bureaus, right? If there was some type of strange unauthorized payment, you're like, well, I'm not paying that. That's crazy. That I'm not. What are you, what are you talking about? And so you wind up getting this late. You might have to fight the late with the bureaus and with the credit card holder. Um, they ran up a tab after I returned their vehicle. Damn. Okay. Yeah. That seems like something. Yeah. That seems like something that this is, this is great because this is one of the reasons why we have credit and credit cards to protect us. Right? So if it is on a credit card, I don't think they really accept debit cards, but if it should be on a credit card, um, that credit card issuer should help you fight such unauthorized charges, right? You see commercials all the time, protected hundred percent from unauthorized, stuff right 
Um, so that's probably your first step. And then after that, you might have to fight in dispute with the bureaus and or the, the rental car company. Have you reached out to them and let them know of their, you know, silly whatever happened? You know, um, this type of stuff shouldn't happen. Occasionally it does. And okay, so yeah, Cap One gave you everything back, gave you all your money back. So Capital One giving me all my money. Okay, great. But Avis has placed it on my credit. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so so you can dispute with the collector, right? Um, this is a situation where it appears as if Cap One is taking your side. So the credit card protects you, right? They say no. And now the rental car company is trying to go a different route and put it on there and, and harm you, right? So you can dispute with the collector, with the bureau. Um, and in, in a situation like this, if Cap One is willing to, um, or whomever, right? Because now it's it's a little bit of like this rental car company is trying to say that something happened that maybe it didn't and that kind of stuff. So if you have any proof or any anything to substantiate your side of it, you can send that to the bureaus, to uh, the collector, to reaching out to Capital One again and asking them, um, well, I, you guys help me out. Please explain to me how you did your investigation because they have to do an investigation. The, the um, credit, credit card issuer does an investigation, okay? And they find, they found for you, which is great, okay? They don't just willy nilly. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Okay, they're supposed to do an investigation. Just every every time, every time things are open, it's an investigation. So if they found for you, they should be able to provide you the information that they found, and you should be able to utilize that to help you leverage that to get it off your credit reports. Okay. If you have further questions, anyone, including Princess Jasmine, please email me. Okay. Email me if you have further questions or concerns. All right, I'm putting my email address in here again. You know, we get to talking, we get to going. All right. Yeah, not, 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 all right, we gotta go back through the live. Yes, Darius, you could send your second round of letters. Princess Jasmine, all right. All right, thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you very much. We'll do and we'll be in touch if any additional questions. Fantastic. Sounds good. Sounds real good. Appreciate you all. I appreciate you all being on the live as well. It's a weekend. I know you probably enjoy grilling and chilling on the weekend. I know last weekend evening I did some grilling and chilling. So maybe you're going to go have a good time this weekend. We'll do a few more questions. And then I'll let you enjoy the rest of I'll let you enjoy the rest of your weekend and know I'll be here working. Getting through these emails. Please feel free to email me. You know, I go through the emails as well. Hmm. This is interesting. Ms. Sharon Dixon, using your 609 dispute letters, is it necessary to call each debt collector to obtain the full account number? Okay, my report does not show the full account number. The answer to that is no, no. You do not need to call any collector or any creditor. You don't need to call, call the bureau. You don't have to call. You will get the partial account numbers on your credit reports. That is all that you will need to utilize for your disputes. So if you see a partial account number, you can put that partial account number in exactly as it appears into the letters. Okay, type it in. And myself, 
I learned that. I was like, hey, man, do I do commercial con? Do I fold account number? Do I have the old stuff around? What, what, is, what do I do? What do I find? Partial account number is fine. Perfect. Send it. Unverified accounts, collection accounts, partial account numbers. And it's also there for your security because actually your social should be partial on your reports as well, right? So when you pull your reports, if someone is looking at, let's say you're going to get a loan for a car, right? Or a home, or you want to start a business and get a credit card for your business or get credit cards for your personal use. And when somebody, anybody is looking at that credit report, they're looking at it and you don't want them to see your social, full social. You don't want them to see your full account number. They would have your full account number, the credit card, you know, where you live, your full social. They could, you know what I mean? So it's for, for, for privacy, for identity uh, reasons, identity theft reasons and, and, and security. So yeah, that's a good thing. But I, I had a similar question when I was first uh, getting going to, I was like, oh man, I need a full account number. No, no, no. Partial account number is perfect. Whoop. Oh, Princess Jasmine also said, yes, you're correct. I have all the supporting docs from the credit card company. Excellent. So you send that. That's right. That's right. You send that to the collectors, to the bureaus. You show them. This is not okay to put this stuff on your credit reports. How many positives do you need on your credit report to be considered the real Derek Jackson? Considered a, uh, what are you referring to? Could be considered a, um, to be considered a good uh, credit, quote unquote risk, a good credit, credit worthy, or to have good credit, or, uh, perhaps, um, or to be considered for good trade lines and, and stuff like that. It just depends on what good stuff. So if you have no negative stuff on there and you have a couple few good, yeah, to be credit worthy. Okay. The real Derek Jackson. It's like, you know, would it be considered credit worthy? How many positives do you need on there? Okay. So it depends a little bit. If you have no negatives on there, a couple few good positive things are going to be solid. It's going to boost you up. I know that I had a good few positives on there um, and had no negatives on there after my, I started my process and cleaned up my credit and had, was up in the 800s. I was fortunate. And even some people are in the 700s. But long term, long term, the highest FICO achievers, I'm not saying to do this today or in the next year, it's going to take a little time. But over long term, 12 revolving cards, credit cards, five of them can be store cards. They don't have to be. You don't need store cards. 12 of them. Utilizing three of them consistently, paying them off every month. And potentially up to five installment loans okay that's the highest level but you can have a variation of it you could have three or four revolving accounts and one uh installment loan and still have great credit right so um it is possible that everyone's situation is different we've talked about that every situation is different but in your case uh mr uh, the real Derek jackson uh if there's something specific you're looking for hey i'm looking for this card or this credit score or whatnot and you want to break it down and you want to chop it up, you can email me. Anyone can email me. We can go back and forth. And, you know, sometimes people don't want to put all their business out on the live, you know, with their real names because we know this is the real Derek Jackson. All right, brother. I appreciate you and uh, I appreciate everyone here. So if you want to, again, email me, please do, and I will help you get to the other side. Brandon, and as always, we appreciate you and the Awesome Life group, grilling and chilling and watching the videos, keeping myself over the 800 because of Brandon. Thank you very much. David E., appreciate you. Dr. Oh, Dre Rev. I thought it was said. Dr. Reverend. Ah, mortgage loan. Mortgage rate in your FICO 5. All right, cool. So... It's very cool. In FICO system, they should should be able to click and see uh, what they're looking at and why the risk is the way it is for a specific score. Okay, so my FICO eights are very close to the mortgage, almost uh, identical. Okay, but yours is a little bit different, a little bit lower. So I would need to know your specific situation and why they're saying because they will usually tell you. They'll usually say, "Oh, not enough installment loans, too much uh, revolving." credit or too many lines of credit not being used they'll they'll come up with all sorts of nonsense guys trust trust me that's silly because his scores are a little bit different 
but mine are not. Why would that be, right? So we have to get into it. What are they saying? What kind of game are they playing? But they'll tell you. They'll tell you what they're looking for. They'll say, like, uh, some other things, too many new too many new accounts, not enough history. Like, they'll tell you what it is. So if you tell me, Dre Rev, Mr. Reverend, Dr. Reverend, what it is, uh, I'll be able to help you. Wow. CJ's Deli. Ooh, Deli sounds good. Little Deli action. Maybe open up a little Deli. I purchased your 609 package. I have proof I went from 496 to 675 in two months. Thank you. I have a question, though. All right. Closed accounts. I have some closed accounts I want to remove. Okay. You can dispute those as well. I don't know if uh, CJ's Deli, if you disputed your closed accounts as well. The six on the speed letters, but you can do that. Sometimes people say, Oh, well, this close can only dispute the charge offs and the collections. The closed accounts, if they're negative, CJ, here's the thing CJ's deli. If they're negative, just because they're closed doesn't mean they're negative. You can have positive closed accounts. Okay. If you have positive closed accounts, CJ, you want to leave them alone. Are they negative, CJ's deli? What are they? The charge offs, the collections. What are they? What are they? CJ, okay. Yes. Okay. So they're negative. So you can, so they're negative. Sorry. I got confused because I asked two questions. I asked if they're positive or negative. Okay. So they're negative. Charge offs and collection. Okay. You can dispute them. Hey, two months. Hey, two months, CJ, you went from CJ's Zelda. You went from four, four ninety six to six seventy five. Sometimes they try to be like, Oh, I'll try to keep you in that middle ground. They want to try and keep me in that middle ground. But look, you can send your next round of disputes, send your collection validations letters as well. All right. Complain to the CFPB. Okay. You can do this. Uh, Mr. Trey. All right. Mr. Trey Griffin. I saw your emails. I've been emailing you. I just emailed you this morning. I don't know. Did you get my email about that? What you asking right now? What can I do to write to the bureaus? The items were removed. You can show the items that were removed with your next round of letters. Okay. That's what you can do. Ah, CJ Zella said, but thank you. Okay, but thank you. All right. Do you have a deli, Mr. CJ's deli? Sounds delicious. Where's your deli? Bam, Bambino, Melendez, para. It's got a long name there. Hello from Chicago. Thank you for everything. You're very welcome. Appreciate it. I'm about to email you. Ah, CJ's deli. Yes, sir. Got a deli. All right. Trey says, yes, LOL. Thanks. I just saw it. Okay, so Trey, you get in my email. See, Trey, right now, Mr. Trey Griffin coming on the live saying, hey, Brandon, I did get your email. I did get your email. That's right, because I email. Because I email you. I will email you. Okay, so feel free to email me. I appreciate it. Appreciate everybody on the live here, being on the live, enjoying it. Getting to the other side. <laughs> Trey Griffin is he's laughing. That's good. Good. Enjoying the laughs, the levity. All right. Enjoying that comedy. Look. I don't always do stand up, but when I do, I don't pay the collectors. All right. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Y'all don't be paying them collectors. All right. Um, from Chrysler Capital, they, oh, yes, yes. So make sure you're sending, you know, your multiple rounds of goodwill letters, but you can also dispute right with the credit bureaus. Okay. You can send your late payment disputes. You can send your 609 disputes. You've got multiple rounds of 609 disputes and you can put unverified late payments. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get this good credit. Let's get this 700, 800 credit score. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to put my email address in here and we're going to sign off for the day. You know how it does. You want to. Thank you, Brandon. We love you. I look KD. I love you as well. I love you all. It is always a blast coming on the live and having a good time with you guys, helping get to the other side. I'm seeing people go from the 400s into the 700s, going from the 400s into the 600s, the 700s, the 800s, from the 500s, the 700s, the 500s, the 800s. You could be next. 609creditrepair.com. We could do the work for you at theawesomelifegroup.com. I'm telling you, you want this. You want to build your wealth, the family wealth, get that home, get that nice car, get that business, get that business credit. We can do this. We can help you. We can get you to the other side, okay? Please give the video a thumbs up. The subscribe tribe button is there for you to press and jump on the live chats, all right? You have changed my family's life, CJ's Deli says. You have changed my family's life, and that's what we want to do. That's what we're about. So until I see you in person, I will see you on the other side. Take care.